How can I stop questioning my salvation? If I doubt my salvation, does that mean I'm not saved? Guys, you see, doubts about our relationship with God plague most of us at some point. And uh, the reason for questioning our salvation are many. Some reasons are valid, some are not. And uh, this message today will explore some common reasons that people question their salvation. And uh, of course, offer biblical solutions for ending those tormenting thoughts. Now, we must, we must uh, first understand uh, or define what salvation means uh, as it pertains to eternity. That's a very, very major thing for us to first understand. What does salvation mean when it pertains to eternity? Before we can know whether we have reason to question our salvation, we need to be certain we understand from the Bible what it means to be a Christian. A good definition of salvation is the deliverance by the grace of God from eternal punishment for sin granted to those who accept by faith God's conditions of repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus. And uh, the first and most obvious reason for some people uh, questioning their salvation is uh, that they are not truly saved. False assurance of salvation is one of Satan's best tricks to keep us from a true relationship with God. But even false assurance can desert us in crisis, in the middle of the night, or when we encounter a spirit-filled Christian and are suddenly faced with the shallowness of our own assumptions. And uh, the Bible tells us in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 13.5, the Bible tells us, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith, okay? See if you're in the faith or not, unless, of course, you fail the test. So self-examination is a good thing as long as we are honest with ourselves and use God's word as our standard. And uh, another reason some people question their salvation is that it is an incredibly extravagant gift. And we cannot earn it. You cannot earn salvation. You can't. You can't earn salvation. And uh, most people think, that uh, there's something that I can do to buy some salvation here. You cannot earn salvation. Salvation is free and given by God. Okay? Now, just as loving parents, some loving parents, uh, give Christmas presents to children before those children are able to do anything worthy of such gifts, our Heavenly Father gives salvation to us when we are at our worst. Sometimes, I don't know if you have found yourself at your worst and God is still giving you gifts. He's still doing great things to you. And you wonder how, how does he do this? How does he do this? Now, we want to lean up our, fa uh, our act first. A person committed to earning one's own way may question his or her salvation. The gift of grace is too humbling to accept. With salvation, there are no markers to tell us when we have arrived. No price tags, no ledgers that tell us when we have achieved a goal. And those who struggle with the grace aspect of salvation must identify what they are basing their salvation on and whether according to scripture they have accepted that gift because the book of Galatians was written to a church struggling with grace and can be an encouragement to those caught in the grace versus works debate I know many people have been in court in this and you really struggle and ask yourself is it really grace? Is it work? 
Now, brothers and sisters, another major reason or another, uh, another major uh, uh, reason why people question their salvation is due to the inner voices that they choose to listen to. Uh, you understand people with intro perspective temperaments may be more prone to doubting their salvation because of their rich inner lives and uh, God's voice Satan's fiery missiles like the Bible tells us in uh, Ephesians 6 16 and their thoughts can be caught in a tangle and they don't know how to sort them out they don't know how to sort them out brothers and sisters we have to learn the art of thought stopping thought stopping the bible tells us about stopping our thoughts do you know how to stop your thoughts the book of second corinthians 10 5 it tells us how we should be keen on stopping our evil thoughts let me show you take every thought captive to Christ do you do that do you take every thought captive and uh, if a voice in our heads does not line up with the truth in God's word let me tell you my friends that one did not come from God we are to be the policemen of our minds on the alert for trespassing thoughts or ideas alerting thoughts and ideas it's really 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 important to think about this the bible tells us in proverbs 4 23 that we should guard our hearts and uh, we see an if we see an intruder and we take it captive let's match that intruder to jesus the judge and ask jesus is this one of yours if we have placed our faith in the finished work of christ and are following him to the best of our understanding then doubts of salvation are intruders and do not belong in a transformed mind those kind of thoughts did not belong to a transformed mind and uh this is something that we need to think about so so much and uh we need to ask ourselves am i really doing what is right because the bible tells us in romans 12 from verse 1 to 2 therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship true and proper worship and uh, we have to understand by developing a habit of thought stopping when we recognize an enemy's lie we can overcome the habit of questioning our salvation another main reason why we doubt our salvation is because of misreading scripture misreading scripture there are times that uh, we misread scripture okay now you, you have to understand even those who have walked with god for long can become delusioned when they run across a verse that seems to contradict their understanding misinterpreting certain passages has allowed satan to place a foot in the doorway of some believer souls let me give you an example here uh when we look at uh, the book of hebrews 6 4 to 6 it says for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened who have tested the heavenly gift and have shared in the holy spirit and have tested the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the son of god to their own harm and holding up to contempt these are some verses my friends which can really mix you up and and unless you sit down and read your bible clearly 
read deeply and take time you may be mixed up and you may be saying oh this one i'm finished this one i think it means i'm done it means it's over for me my friends we have to wake up we have to be very keen look at uh, matthew 7 21 it says not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven these are passages which can confuse you and many other jarring passages misunderstood can cause weak believers to believe that what they thought was secure salvation was actually at risk but it's not my friends all you need to do is read more and understand read more keep reading for example if we look at this verse not everyone that says unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven you see this verse is telling us that the will of god is what we have to do to be saved not just going to church and being in benches there shouting and singing and saying amen because people can think oh i've been in church doing all this you mean god is going to blot me out from the book of life no it means you've never had a relationship with him you've just been an intruder just getting into a, a church gathering and you never believed you never did the will of god which is believing the gospel now my friends we stay balanced and assured of our relationship with god when we consider carefully the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god really really important let me see if i have something here that i can show you concerning the whole counsel of god see the book of acts 20 verse 26 to 27 it says wherefore i take you to record this day that i am pure from the blood of all men for i have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of god the counsel of god we are supposed to be balanced be balanced don't just pick one side of the bible and say i want this one for me i don't want that one for me no that you're not taking all the whole counsel of god you must interpret unclear passage, uh, passages and verses in light of clear easily understandable verses if one co uh, a verse causes undue fear keep on studying keep on studying keep on studying study more and more and more and more okay keep on studying are you understanding my point and see what god's word as a whole says consult godly teachers research different websites where people are talking about god and and things like that and talking about different verses research sites research different places listen to someone's on youtube but keep it always about jesus who is and what he did on our behalf and what our response to him has been you see paul wrote in first corinthians 2 2 um, that uh, he said i'm determined to know nothing more about you except christ and him crucified you know if you're determined to think about other things and uh, you're not concerned about christ crucified then my friends you're on a place where you're lost it's supposed to be all about christ even as you do your research even as you do your your checking and you listen to people if somebody starts telling you about you know a good life and prosperity and uh, how you're going to make it in this way or another apart from christ then there's something wrong it has to be about christ and him crucified we must bring all our questions back to jesus and remember that he wants to save us more than we want to be saved salvation was a good idea uh, was a, a good god's idea and he will never withhold it from someone who diligently seeks him if you diligently seek god he will never he will never stay away from you <sighs> 
guys are we seeking god are we seeking god in our things and uh, what we do are we really working for god and looking forward to him the bible tells us in jeremiah 29 13 you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart are you seeking god with all your heart look at uh, the book of luke 19:10 it says for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost he's seeking you he's seeking you and look at john 6:37 all that the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me i will never cast out brothers and sisters you can never be cast out probably if you're seeking something wrong and you're not seeking him like he tells you to seek me and you will find me if you're not seeking him then you'll be seeking something else and chances of you losing it they're very high now there's something else called a uh, besetting sins besetting sins can cause us to question our salvation when a particular sin habit reassert themselves or refuse to live we may doubt we were even ever saved at all do you remember the apostle paul the apostle paul in uh, the book of romans chapter 7 this can be a comfort to those battling fleshly temptations it helps us to know that even the apostle paul wrestled with his flesh he was always trying to do good but he's finding himself is doing what is wrong what i do i don't want to do it and that that i don't want to do that is what i do what i hate is what i do that that's that's a good encouragement to tell us that my friends we are wrestling with the flesh we are wrestling with the flesh so much we are wrestling with the flesh and we have to defeat this flesh okay we have to defeat this flesh now let me show you something here uh in the book of hebrews 12 verses 1 hebrews 12 verses uh 1 It tells us something that is really really important and and I want to show you this. Um let me check it out. Mm. Anyway, I'm I'm not kind of seeing this verse, but uh Anyway, let me let me just uh explain to you. This this verse in Hebrews 12 verse 1, it basically encourages us to lay aside every weight and a uh, sin which clings so closely. And uh the Bible tells us and let us run with endurance. Run with endurance. Okay? Yeah, actually is here. It tells us let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that uh so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of faith Hebrews 12:1 to 2 are you running my friends we are on a journey we are supposed to be running we are supposed to be running are you running are you running your race We do this by considering ourselves dead dead to sin. Okay? We are dead to sin. The Bible tells us in Romans 6:11, in the same way count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Are you dead to sin, my friends? Are you focused on running the race and avoiding everything else which is pulling you back? all those besetting sins are you forgetting them and following Christ count yourself dead our flesh is no longer alive but is dead according to Christ so our flesh no longer gets a vote on our decisions 
it is to be treated like a toddler who wants to play in the street okay think about a toddler playing in the street a wise and loving parent will look out for the child's best interest and do whatever is necessary to re- redirect the child to safety doubts recede as we gain the victory over sins that once enslaved us the god who lives in us is greater than the sin that tempts us and his power makes us more than conquerors his power makes us more than conquerors look at romans 8:37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us through him that loved us and also in the book of first john 4:4 4, 4, he says he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world now something else there are some uh, dry seasons okay dry seasons of the spirit that may also cause us to question our salvation now seasons of dryness are part of any believer's journey there are times when our ability to perceive the presence of god is far greater than at other times we talk about feeling close to god but f- but feelings are not trustworthy barometers you see feelings sometimes we trust our feelings so much and we say oh my my feelings my feelings this and that <laughs> but the bible warns us about trusting our feelings the bible warns us about trusting our feelings let me show you a verse here uh, in the book of james james uh, 48 james 48 it tells us something about uh, uh, actually let me see uh, where is it actually don't see the verse but uh, let me just uh, tell you what it says James 4:8 says draw near to God and he will draw near to you God draws near to us whether or not we feel him I'm sure there are times that you don't really feel like uh, doing things of God or really believing The Bible always tells us that he's faithful and he will not deny us. He's faithful. Think about a marriage where maybe the husband or maybe the wife has decided to not believe the husband, but the husband is really faithful and is keeping on and pushing on. One day, one day things will get better. Jesus is our husband and he will never deny us no matter how much we try to deny him because it's not us it's the flesh which is trying to deny and uh, we have to understand that the holy spirit does not leave us the holy spirit does not leave us okay because we're not walking by our faith we are not walking by uh, our sight but we are walking by faith it's really important to put these things in mind look at this hebrews 13:5 the bible tells us keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because god has said i will never leave you i will never forsake you God will never leave you or forsake you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Why are you worried? Why are you worried, my friends? Why are you worried? Do you think that God is going to leave you? He's not going to leave you. He promised you. Okay? He promised you. It's really important to have this in mind, my friends so that you don't be caught up in the things of this world okay 
we don't walk by 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 sight but by faith second corinthians 5 7 and uh, we tend to question our relationship with god when we are experiencing a spiritual dry season but those seasons can actually help us dig deeper obey anyway and learn to endure learn to endure are you learning to endure even when things really get bad are you enduring are you pushing on are you pushing on it's really important to push on to endure to stay and keep the faith and do what you can be able to do because God promised us he will always be there for us just go and read uh, Revelation 14 12 and first uh, John 2 3 the Bible tells us to keep on to keep on to keep on enduring now something else we have to understand is that we stop questioning our salvation when we choose to take God at his word you remember what God told us in uh, in uh, John 3 16 he told us for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him you see people are thinking that Jesus came so that he can condemn us no no he came so that we can be saved and we are saved by faith and nothing else okay we are saved by faith and nothing else if we have faith that Jesus is is who he claimed to be and if our lives are an ongoing demonstration that is our Lord then we should have the assurance that we belong to him and nothing can pluck us from his hands remember what Simon Peter answered the Bible tells us in Matthew 16 16 but whom say ye that I am Simon Peter answered you are the Christ the son of the living God my friends you have to understand the one that you're believing in is not any other person out there is the son of the living God the son of the living God now according to A.W. Tozer he wrote that faith he wrote a very good quote he said that faith is the least self-regarding of the virtues it is by its very nature scarcely conscious than in all its own existence and the man who has struggled to purify himself and has had nothing but repeated failures will experience real belief or real relief when he stops tickering with his soul and looks away to the perfect one while he looks at christ the very things he has so long been trying to do will be getting done with him my friends the bible is there for us be patient be patient and push on push on my friends don't don't be waved by any 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 stories of any doctrine out there which are telling you you can lose your salvation the bible tells us to keep on revelation 14 12 here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus keep that faith and what god commanded you he commanded you to have faith in him he commanded you to put your 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 he commanded you to put your focus on him because we don't walk by sight we walk by faith second corinthians 5 7 and finally brothers as i finish up this brothers and sisters do you believe the gospel the gospel is found in first corinthians 15 1 through 4 it's all about understanding how that christ died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures jesus died for you so that if you believe in him you will not perish that's the whole work that you need to do 
And after you believe, confess to him in a prayer and tell him what you have believed. That's why the sinner's prayer does not save. But you're saved by believing. Once you believe, you can confess what you've believed. You don't confess what you don't know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a, a like and also you can share to your friends and subscribe and uh, at the description below you can see a couple of other channels uh, outside YouTube where you can watch more videos which we post every day. God bless you and have a good time.